You probably know what this is. You probably don't. Don't worry about it. I have the next tab running here. And I'm going to build it and start it in production mode. And what I want to do is look at some of the performance, what are the scripts that load, all of that. So if I load it without cache, you see there's a Webpack thing, there's a framework, this has a React, React DOM, uh, Next.js, I assume, and that's some, some whatever kilobytes. And then, so all of this is basically your setup and index something 1.6 KB is the actual page script. And so I have another page, which is the register page, which has like some breadcrumbs and has this input and whatever. And you see that when I go to that page, Webpack framework main, all of that is still there and it all comes from cache. And then I have this register, which is the only thing that was fetched, right? So this is what you get out of the box. It's perfect. You kind of get good caching. You get page splitting with each page and that's how you get cached. So now if I change the register page and I save this and build it again. Remember, we're not in dev mode, we're in production, so we've got to build it again. Okay, so now if I just simple reload, you'll see that this cache was invalidated, so it had to be fetched again, but everything else came from crash. And now if I go to home, everything's cached. Nothing really changed because I did not change anything on this page. So this is brilliant caching mechanism. And when we talk about performance in, in front end, we, we end up talking a lot about just the front end performances of first load. So, you know, what's the first time to first byte, what's all of that. But in, in a lot of apps that get visited again and again, your second time performance, your third time performance isn't so much based on what happened in the first load. That's more based on what cache invalidation happens. So when you deploy your app again, when you make changes, what caches get invalidated. So that's what I'm thinking about here. Yeah, in each of these pages, I have this like, uh, component library that things are coming from. So my breadcrumb, my input, my buttons, my avatar, all of this is coming from a component library. So we saw that when you change a page, only that page gets cache invalidated. But what happens when you update your component library? So what I did was I created an update. In that update, I changed the input components. Now you see that it doesn't really match. The button and the input don't really match the style. So I fixed that and I published that as a new version in the input component. Now I'm going to build the app again because we, you know, updated a dependency and something interesting will happen. So now when I reload this page with normal cache, what happens is that entire page gets invalidated because well, something on this page changed. And when I go to home, this doesn't use the input. So this doesn't get cache invalidated. And that's very interesting because now you see that each page, like if I change the button, both of these pages would get invalidated and that's not that's fine, but that's not great. So I'm using an XJS project, but it could be anything that uses Webpack. Where what I can do is kind of tap into the optimization. And there's this Webpack feature called Split Chunks Plugin. I'm not going to go into it. You can read about it online. But it basically lets you optimize exactly what files should be outputted for caching. So I have this test over here, which caches all the things from my library. and uh, it basically just puts them all in a different chunk. So let's try it out. I'm going to build this. We started. There we go. It's on. And now you'd see that there are two. So there's this libru and there's this register and these two are two pages. So now if I go to a different page, you'd still have to fetch the page, but this is already cached. So that's, that's really interesting pattern. Uh, but what happens if I update the library? So I'm going to go back to the previous version that I had. Now when I restart my server, um, you'll see some interesting things here where you see that only the component library got updated and the page remains the same. So even if I go to the other page, nothing really changed. It's all coming from cache because the first page already cached the library, which is good and bad both. What's interesting is that um, the entire library is getting invalidated, even though I just changed one component. So I can actually go deeper where Instead of merging all of them in one bundle, uh, what would happen if I created a different bundle or a different file for each component? So we can absolutely do that. And I'm going to do that and run my production build again. And just to show you how that would look, I'm going to do it cache hard reload. So you see that the number of files has definitely increased. And we got some roll up baby plugin helpers and we got a button input breadcrumb all of this. So we got a bunch of files now. 
And because like browsers have some limit of how many files can they load. So some of these files actually got delayed in the waterfall, which would impact your first load times. But then after they're cached, um, they're just cached. So if I go to home, you'd see that all of this came from cache. The only thing that didn't was this avatar component because the other page didn't use it and the page itself. So now let's try to do the update thing that we did again, where um, updated the input. So I'm gonna download the new version, rebuild my website, and here we go. Let's reload this page and see what happens. So this page doesn't even use input. So everything comes from cache, even though the library has changed. And now if I go to the register page, you see that everything comes from cache except the input component that's changed. So this is like the most granular cache thing that you can have. And you can see that it just loads like a few bytes of what actually changed. So um, it's an interesting pattern of if your page gets visited a lot and you have a few internal libraries that, you know, maybe a peer dependency with a different team, um, you might have a lot of churn in these. So, I didn't bump all of this into framework because I feel like framework is like React, Next, these might not, you might not update these versions a lot, uh, but your component library that maybe another team works on, that might get updated a lot. So the trade-off here is that the first load is slower. You kind of have to measure how slow based on your app. Um, for this sample app, is barely any difference, but uh, the granular caching is pretty impressive. So the subsequent loads only fetch exactly what has changed. And I think that's pretty cool. Cool, that's it. I'll see you later. Bye.